In this movie, I want to share some of my all-time favorite housekeeping tips with you. These are some of the tips that I try to leave behind with every client that I work with or the classes that I teach. Think of them as my tips to help you streamline your work in Photoshop. The very first tips are about your viewing environment. If the decor in your office or your studio looks anything like this picture, then you'll have to make some changes. Here's why. If the desk where you perform any kind of color correction is close to a window, then you're too close to natural light, which is a bad thing in this situation. Natural light, as you might know, changes and shifts around all day long. In fact, in a place like San Francisco, which is where I'm from, you can go from having intense golden sunlight to deep gray fog in minutes. But all of this entertainment comes at a price, unfortunately. It turns out that the color quality of light, or color temperature as we call it, is a huge factor in affecting our perception of color in terms of the way it appears on the monitor and when we view printed proofs. So what's the solution? Install blinds. This will help you to block the natural light completely whenever needed. It really is best to work in a darkened room. But if that's not possible for some reason, I recommend that you move your desk to another location where you're less likely to be affected by the natural light. The next problem I want to point out is the yellow paint on the wall. This is a problem because any light that bounces off these walls will also have a warm color cast to it, which will impact your perception of color in this room some more. The ideal wall color for our purpose is a neutral gray. And from that matter, any other neutral color will work just as well. It's hard to tell what kind of lighting is being used here, but to create a bright and neutrally lit room, you need to avoid working under warm tungsten lighting or cool and harsh fluorescent lighting. To evaluate your printed proofs, the best kind of lighting is daylight balanced, which means that its color temperature lies in the 5,000 degrees to 5,500 degrees Kelvin. Philips makes such bulbs, and of course, controlled lighting viewing booths have been around for a long time. In fact, you now have access to portable viewing booths that you can put up on your desktop and use whenever you want to evaluate your printed proofs. Here are some other miscellaneous tips. You can cut the glare from ambient lighting on your monitor by installing a monitor hood. This is one of the cheapest and most effective ways to boost the saturation of colors that you see on screen. And some people swear that they get a seemingly greater dynamic range on their images as well. And that's always a good thing. And finally, at the risk of sounding like a party pooper, I have to caution you against wearing vibrant colored clothing, especially when you're sitting down to do any serious color correction. It really does tend to reflect back off the screen and it will impact the colors that you're working on. The next tip I want to pass along is the importance of calibrating and profiling your monitor. Why? Well, many of you might know this already, but monitors can be unpredictable in many different ways. There are two main problems with most monitors. One is that they tend to have color casts, which makes everything that's supposed to be neutral appear to have a greenish color cast or a pinkish cast or some other color. That's bad when it comes to color correcting an image because you don't know where to begin. The second problem is that most monitors suffer from shifting midtones. This can make your artwork appear too light or too dark overall. But when you calibrate your monitor using a good professional product, it takes care of both of these problems and more. Most of these packages come with a hardware component like a little suction cup device that hooks up to your monitor and it actually measures the brightness and the colors that your monitor displays. Then some corresponding software is used to create a unique profile that describes your monitor's behavior. And this is handed off to the color management system on your computer. It turns out that Photoshop is hooked into the system and can use this information in your monitor profile to display the colors on your screen correctly. I have to caution you against using a system that relies on you making visual choices for calibrating your monitor. It's way too subjective and just not as effective in my experience. 
you might as well do this right. There's a ton of good solutions out there for under $200, and you can see some of my recommendations in the movie titled Must Have Gizmos.